In this video, I'm going to show you how you can prepare data to then train a unit model to segment the Thinnyman's trauma. So if we go back to the folder we downloaded from GitHub, if we go to local unit datasets, we have the data about nuclei we'll use later, and um, data about epithelium and stroma polyps. So if I go in there, I have a test folder with the images we want to segment and a training folder with images. So let's first have a look at the images we have. Look like this. So here we have two channels. In blue, we have uh, DAPI. So we can identify the nuclei where the cells are located in these images. And in white, we have cytokeratin which is a marker that um, allows us to identify the epithelial cells. So here we see that we can identify epithelium wherever we have cytokeratin, and stroma is going to be everything else where we have cells. And obviously we'll have another class, which is going to be a background where here we don't have any tissue at all or in the lumen. So the main challenge is going to be to identify stroma in regions where we don't have, where we have a low density of cells, like in here. And just to understand what, what it exactly is, if I really zoom in a lot. Now here, it's really hard to know if this is background or if this is stroma. We need context. And that means we need to have an imaging field for a model that is large enough so we can uh, see where, um, where when we have these kind of regions, we can see that this is actually surrounded by stroma and that has to be strong. All right. So now if I go back to my folder, I have the images, but I don't have the masks. But actually, uh, this is all, also available on my GitHub folder. If you go back to my GitHub folder and if you go to Deep Learning Based Segmentation for Biologists, which is the previous workshop I, I, I did for um, Deep Learning, if you go to data, you have something which is called annotated epithelium and stroma. And in this folder, you have the images, which is so the same images we have in, in our, um, in the other uh, folder, what we downloaded from GitHub. And you have the mask that corresponds to the image. So uh, I'm just gonna go to um, the folder. So just to show you here. So this is what I downloaded from GitHub, the second one, and if I go to data, and then untated epithelium and stroma, I can copy and paste the mask in my other folder. And so now I have, let's just have a look, if I open again this image, I'm gonna have the corresponding mask. Here, we have three different uh, so slices in the stack, this one here corresponds to the background. This corresponds to the epithelium, and this corresponds to the stroma. All right. So uh, now we have the training uh, data set. We could stick with that and just uh, randomly pick uh, images for validation data set, which is also an option we can use in, in, the, in the notebook. Unfortunately, here, that wouldn't be a great idea because if you look at this, if we go back again here, if we, um, for training, we, random, we randomly crop images, right? So depending on the imaging film, it's going to be somewhere in the image. Just want to show you that here, it's very large images, 1868 by 1400 pixels. So the imaging field, we'll see, um, what's, what the best size would be. If we take it too small, like 256 by 256, we're going to have regions like this, going to be very small, and here it will be very hard to know that this is actually background because we don't have any context. So we're going to take something a little bit large, 512 by 512. It's probably not ideal, and something larger would be better. But if we take something larger, um, it's going to be hard to run with small GPUs, so we're going to uh, limit ourselves with 512 by 512. Now, for training, it's fine because we randomly crop different part of the images for each epoch. But for validation, the way it's coded is that it's just, it just takes the upper left 
corner of the image of the imaging field. And so here we have large images, and if we do that, we're going to uh, waste most of the images. So what we're going to do is that we're going to define the validation data set. So if I go back here, we define a folder I'm going to call validation. The other great thing with that is that we're going to always, when we train different uh, models with different parameters, validation data set will always be the same. So when we compare the curves we get for accuracy and mass, it's going to be um, um, it's going to make more sense because we uh, compare them on the same data. So in validation, I'm going to create a folder images and a folder mask. Now, I told you we want to have smaller images. So I'm going to create a folder that I'm going to call big images. It's going to be images with the same format as the one we use for training and big mask. And then We'll use uh, write this images. So let's first of all pick some images in the training to be used as validation. So here we have 20. Let's say we're going to use two images. So like the first one, and then the first one for poly 42. As you can see, we have images that start with poly 12 or poly 42 or poly 101 or poly. So these are tiles coming from four polyps, four different polyps. So we're going to take two different images, so two images from two different polyps. So let's say the first one with body 12 and the first one with body 42. So I'm going to cut it and then paste it into validation. Very important to remove them from the training data sets. You don't want to use images in your training data set and in your validation data set. And the same thing for mask. No, sorry, I mean validation. Go back to training, mask. First one for body 12, first one for body 42. Again, I cut. I'm going to show it clearly here that we do a cut, not a copy. We do a cut so we don't have the same images in validation and in training. And now I'm going to open. So if you go back in the unit folder, there's an image JMAC, which is called divide images into sub-images that we're going to use to divide the images, these big images, in smaller images. So if you remember, big images to have the format of these images. So it's 1868 by 1400, and we want to have something that is at least 512 by 512. So I'm going to open this calculator to know what uh, factor I need to use. So 1868 divided by 512, it's 3.6. I'm going to take 3 and 1400 divided by 512, 2.7. So I'm going to take 3 and 2. So if you go back to the macro, here you have so it's a macro where you define your input directory when you have the images, the output when you want to save the sub-images, the suffix. And uh, here you have the parameters. So number of tiles in uh, per width. So Tom we said that it will be three. Number of tiles for height is going to be two. So this is fine. And I can run it. So I have this window. That pops up. I need to define my input directory. So here, just to show you, I'm going to go back to desktop folder I downloaded from GitHub, local unit data sets, like Binion and Strona, validation, big images. I'm going to put the sub images in images. So if I go back to desktop, It's in this drama. Right. Some times it's a bit hard in here. Right. I run it, so it divides them into sub images. And now if I go to images, so I have 
12 images, 6 image per polyp, C polyp 12, same name and intense with zero. But now we have 623 by 700. So it's a little bit larger than 512 by 512. So I'm going to do the same thing for the mass. Big mass. Third. Mass. Third. I can run it. Good. Masks, and I have also 12, 12 images for the maps that corresponds to what we had before. Right now, so now I can even remove those four, and I'm ready to train a unit for epithelium and stroma segmentation. 